Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to everybody about how to use a steamer properly to treat for bed bugs. This is probably one of the most popular questions I get, uh, which is, you know, I have a steamer. I know steamers can kill bed bugs and their eggs on contact. Um, I bought one, and I don't know how to use it to kill bed bugs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that a little bit, the areas that you want to target, and then how you actually want to apply that steam. So before we even get to that, though, we should talk about why you use a steamer. Um, what we know is that bed bugs are very susceptible to heat. Um, once you get over 120 degrees, both the bugs and their eggs will die very quickly in less than a minute, actually. Um, and when you apply steam, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to get an instant kill. You're trying to get these bugs to die at, you know, the minute that you go over top of them. And so really what you're trying to achieve is probably 160 to 180 degrees, maybe even a little bit more than that. And so when you have a steamer that you're considering for applying um, for bed bug control, what you can always do is you can take a fold in a couch. Now obviously this isn't a couch, but if you have a fold of fabric on the couch, you can take an instant read thermometer, such as that you would use to cook a turkey or chicken in the oven, uh, put it in that fold, and then take your steam head and go over top of that instant read thermometer at about an inch per second. And if that instant read thermometer goes over 160, 180 degrees, you know that steamer will work for bed bugs. Um, so, what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and treat this chair. Now again, like I said, you're going to use a steamer to kill both bugs and eggs on contact. Really good for couches, that's our primary area that we use them. Um, we're going to treat this desk chair right here. Um, obviously not a couch, but still we can communicate the same points. And so, where we're typically going to look when it comes for bed bugs and where we're going to steam are seams, edges, and folds in the fabric. Bugs like to hide in cracks and crevices, and they orient themselves to seams and edges. And so if I look at this desk chair, the first place I'm going to inspect for bed bugs is right along this seam right here, where the backing actually attaches to the back of the cushion. And so you can see that there's a nice gap right there, where if they're going to be on here, that's typically where they're going to be. And so when we're going to steam for bed bugs, let's say we notice a few bed bugs and their eggs in this crack or crevice. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our steamer, this steamer right here is an Amerivap Steamax. Um, everybody was asking what steamers we use. We've used a bunch of different steamers. This just happens to uh, be the one that we've become most familiar with. And what we're going to do is that you have your steam head here. When it comes to steaming for bed bugs and their eggs, you really want to use a bigger steam head. If you have a narrower, let's say, pinpoint steam head on here, the steam is going to come out at a very fast velocity and probably shoot bugs off of the surface before they actually die. And so you want to go ahead and use one of these bigger heads. This one has a triangular head, and a lot of steamers come with rectangular heads. Both of those will work. Now, we're going to go ahead and put a towel on the steam head. And why we do this is to limit the amount of moisture that actually is applied to the surface. Obviously, steam is water that's vaporized, and it can be pretty wet. And so we want to try to limit the amount of moisture. That's why we put the towel on. Now, in the rare instance that you're trying to get penetration into a crack with a steamer, you want to take the towel off because the towel is going to limit some of the penetration into a crack. But most of the time we're using the towel. So we folded the towel in half. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and apply it or attach it to the steam head like yay. And there we have our towel attached to the steam head. And so what we're going to do is we're going to pick our target area, which is this seam right here, and typically what we recommend is moving at about an inch per second. And so we're going to turn our steamer on, wait till the steam starts to come out of the head, as you can see it is now, and you're going to go ahead and move at about an inch per second. When you go and steam, you want to make sure, and I'll show you in a second, you want to make sure when you're moving the steamer, you have the back of the steamer up off the surface at a very, very minor angle. And you can see here, there's a little bit of a gap there. The reason why you want to do that is that if you put it flush against that surface, what you're going to do is you're just going to end up pushing the bugs down the surface. You want them to go under that steam head. And so you want to pick it up off the surface in about an inch per second. You can always steam an area if you see bed bugs, go over top of them at the rate you think you need to go and check to see if they died. That's what we typically do many times. And so you're going to move it about an inch per second. And what we typically do is check the surface behind the steamer after we're done. 
And if it's warm to the touch, that's typically what we're trying to achieve. We don't want it to be cold, because obviously that might mean we moved too fast and there wasn't enough heat transferred to that area. But you also don't want it to be hot. If you like can't touch that surface right after you're done, that might mean you're moving too slow. And you want to make sure that you're not damaging the surface that you're on. And so, the last thing you want to consider when you're steaming something like this is we typically also recommend to move from top to bottom. And the reason is, is that if I start at the bottom down here, What's happening to that steam? It's going up. And so if there's any bed bugs up here, and I'm moving up as I steam, again with that head tilted up at a little angle to make sure the bugs go under, anything that's up here is probably scattering before I ever get to it, because they feel that heat coming. And so again, top to bottom, pick the back of the steamer up just a little bit so the bugs go underneath it, about an inch per second. You want to keep an eye on the rate that you move. Like I said, warm surface to the touch, cold probably moving too fast, hot probably moving too slow. Um, and certain surfaces you cannot steam. You know, certain finishes on furniture, leather, you don't want to steam leather. Leather will, you know, be ruined if you actually steam most leathers. Certain paints will peel and bubble with steam. And so you need to be careful. What we usually recommend is you start steaming in an area that's relatively, you know, people can't see the back bottom of a dresser or, or a, a corner of the living room that is behind a piece of furniture that people won't typically see. That way, if something does happen that you didn't anticipate, it's in an area that people probably won't really notice it. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, there's really not much else to steaming. You know, there's not a ton of protocol. And so, We'll just do this couch. Now, if I'm going to steam this entire chair for bed bugs, I'm going to pay attention to all these different areas. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start our steamer. Start at the top. Move it about an inch per second with the back off. The surface a little bit. And we're going to do the same around the other side. as I kick the steam around. And more or less, that's the perimeter of this actual surface steamed. Now, people will say, well, why didn't you steam in the middle over here? Because there's probably not bed bugs there. You can see that surface. They like to hide in cracks and crevices. And so there just aren't any bed bugs out there. I mean, if you notice activity, you definitely can. But again, you probably won't notice any. And in regards to this chair, the other area that we would steam, I'm not going to go through the whole protocol, but I would do this area down here. Again, a seam or an edge. You see this little uh, string here that the bugs would probably sit on, and they may go underneath this actual fabric or up underneath this cover. So I may consider steaming the bottom of this chair as well, paying attention that I don't destroy this paper. So that's basically steaming for bed bugs, inch per second. Top to bottom, keep the leading edge of the steamer up just a little bit so the bugs go underneath. Um, pleats and folds and fabric, you want to go ahead and put the steamer over it and let it penetrate through. That's really on couches where you're targeting. Skirts on the couch, stuff like that, great areas to steam. Killing bugs and eggs on contact, great tool, really love it, totally support it. All right, everybody, have any questions about steaming? Jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com, and I hope to see everybody soon enough.